welcome back and let's continue our journey to BFS. So we have three problems in our sequence and let's go ahead and read the second problem, the maze number two. And there's a ball in the maze with the empty spaces and the walls. And the ball can go through the empty spaces by rolling up, down, left or right. But it won't stop rolling until hitting a wall. When the ball stops, you could choose the next direction. So given the starting position and destination and the maze, find the next shortest distance for the ball stopping at this destination. So what the question is asking is very similar to the previous problem. So the previous problem indicating that we are given the starting position and the ending position, and we want to find if there's a valid path to get to the destination from the starting position. Once we do, return true, otherwise we return false. But this position, uh, this particular problem asking you, so if you can reach from the starting position all the way to destination, can you find a path that returns the minimum summation of the distance? So we can go all the way from here to here with a three, with, with actually two distance. So we're gonna calculate the shortest distance. So if we wanna calculate the shortest distance, and I think the solution is more like a, a self-explanatory, uh, we're gonna use Dystra. And the way we use Dystra is like before. So everything will be similar to BFS, except that we are now gonna track the shortest distance. So what is the data structure we can uh, tracking the shortest distance? We actually wanna sort, we actually wanna sort, uh, have a data structure can sort but not necessarily sort of everything, but we wanna find the smallest value. And obviously we're gonna use a heap. So in, in default value in Python, heap is more like a mean heap. So we're gonna return the minimum value from uh, this data structure. So that's why we're gonna pick heap and we're gonna write a solution that actually works. So let's go ahead and start like coding. Uh, let's define the boundary first. So the boundary is gonna be, okay. That's the boundary is gonna be the length of the maze. So that's the row and that's the column length. And we store that and we also need a heap. And the heap is gonna be uh, a list. So what's in the list? And what's in the list is gonna be our distance. So at our initial position, our distance is gonna be zero because we haven't moved anything yet. So, and then we put the coordinates there and the coordinates is gonna be what's given in the problem. So that's the starting position and we're gonna reach all the way to destination. Once we have the heap, so let's uh, put a distance. So the distance is gonna be a hash map. So what, what it records is gonna be, we have a key and put our coordinates. The value we're gonna cache is gonna be integer. That stands for the shortest distance. So the variable should name as the shortest distance, but I'm a slow typer, I'm not gonna write everything. But yeah, but just remember, we are storing the shortest distance. You know what, let me put a comment. Shortest distance for particular, uh, particular coordinate. Okay, sounds great. So we have this. And let's go ahead and write directions in case we need it later. Because once we explore the neighbors, we need, we need to explore the all four directions. And we can go left. Oh, actually this is go down. Down, up, uh, left, right. Okay, perfect. So, uh, Okay, so once we have the four directions and then we start doing the BFS. And the way we do BFS is we popping everything out from our queue. Equal to, uh, now it's not queue anymore, so we have to do uh, hip pop. And the hip pop is gonna pop the, the distance and the distance is right here and the position, the, the X coordinates and the Y coordinates. And now we're gonna check if the value we popped out is already reached the destination. So if we did, we just return the distance. So why do we return the distance? It's because we have a default mean heap. The mean heap is gonna return us the minimum value. So the smallest distance. And the smallest distance is gonna be this guy. So that, that's why we can directly return that. And we are gonna start like exploring the four directions. And the way we uh, explore the four directions is the things we defined before. And we have the four directions, we're gonna explore every one of them. 
So the x is going to be the x coordinates change, and the y is going to be the change for the y coordinates. Um, I think the x and the y, you know, I, I think I, I it came up this from the calculus actually. Uh, stands for like a little change so one direction change we can go ahead with that particular uh, direction and once we have that and we can have three different parameters to tracking our pointers and to pointing to ij and distance and we, we're going to start up updating for these three parameters what can we update if we are in particular position for example right here so we're in the initial position so we pick one particular direction we're going to keep rolling keep rolling until we hit a wall. So what that means is that as long as we are in the empty space, we can keep going. And that's the caveat that we discussed before in the in the last video. And so we're gonna put this as well and same thing for uh, y less than n. And also that the mains x and y will be equal to zero. Equal to zero means that we are still in the empty space. If we are in the empty space, we can keep rolling. So that's why we're going to use x plus or equal to dx, y plus equal to dy, and our step will plus or equal to one. So that's recording like how many more steps you will want to. So because we pick a direction, we keep going with that, that direction. So that's why I have the plus one. And once we have that, I think we discussed that in the uh, last video as well. So for example, we are here, we going into this direction. This is the empty space and we keep going. And this is also empty space and we keep going actually. With this loop, we are actually keep going. And so we need to do a backtrack because we already hit into the wall. So we have to come back. So the way we come back is we backtrack the X. And, and same thing with the steps. So we have to backtrack for one step as well. And because we uh, have like one more steps like already being recorded. So once we have everything ready, so we can go ahead and check if we already calculated this before. If we never calculate this before, then we are never storing these coordinates into distance. And then we can store this distance into our coordinates. And that's where we're doing the calculation. And this will be equal to the steps. Okay, so once we have that, and we can push everything into our heap. And what are the things we can push into our heap? It's going to be step and x and y. And then we can return our negative one if we never reach that destination. And we're actually missing one thing. So what is that thing? Think about it. If we never computed this before, and then we can compute this. That makes sense. But what if we are in one of the spot like here? So for example, we are in this spot. So we can have the ball coming from the left hand side or from the right hand side. What if the newest updated value is less than the, the guy from the left hand side? What if what if we actually went to here? Or for example, it's right here. Uh we, we can the ball can come come over from here or come over from here. What if the, the new step the new direction we pick across like this spot, as it actually has less distance than before, we can actually update it, right? And unfortunately, we have the new steps. So what if this guy is less than the distance we recorded before? That means this is not the perfect distance. And if that's the case, we can also update it, right? Okay. And I think we are done. Let's try running the code if that works. Oh, that is so slow. Okay, we got TLE. So let's check the logic. So we have the initial position and we put the four directions and we have the distance and we have the while loop and popping out every single steps we have and we do the operation for, for the loop. And once we see the destination, we just return the distance. So that should work. And uh, OK, so we are going for the four directions. And we tracking the parameters. So we have the i and j as our coordinates. And 
if the coordinates works and we if we are in the empty space we can keep going all the way into all the way down and until we hit the wall once we hit the wall we backtrack that should work so i don't see any issues from here uh, and then so we oh okay Mm, still have the TLE. Mm. It looks right, huh? Can tell. Initial position, directions. I think it should work. Oops, okay. Wow, that's that's embarrassing. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay, let's give it one more shot. Finally. Okay. Now it works. Um, yeah, that's uh, how we solve it, right? Um, standard BFS, and the only difference we have right now is we keep track of the diff distance, and we keep the distance as a hash map, and to recording the key as the coordinates, and the value is going to be the shortest distance. So as long as we have the new distance is shorter than the previous one that we recorded, so and then we can recalculate it. Or like we never calculated this before, we could go ahead and calculate it. Otherwise, we keep going. And uh, the other things are self-explanatory, very similar to standard BFS. And I think we are done. Okay, great. Embarrassing. See you in the next video.